Hey guys, welcome back to part two of rebuilding this rotor hydraulic shiv. Same thing here. I'm gonna grab my pencil and just put a T for top. That appears to all be the same. It does not appear to be a, to be directional, but uh, just in case, that way when I go to put it back on, the T's up on top. All right, I just got that marked. Problem is though, that bolt, get that belt out of the way. That bolt is right behind uh, what appears to be an oil line. May have to take and um, use a wrench to get that one out. Well, I tried using a wrench and so far I cannot get on that. Why they put that in front of that bolt, I don't know, that's pretty dumb. But um, I may have just taken separate that right there. Hopefully not a bunch of oil comes pouring out. I'm gonna see if I can separate that and after I can get up in there. I even use a 3 8 socket. That'd be, that way it'd be smaller and still no go. Let's see if we can do this pry bar first. Well, hey, you know what? I think that'll work. Now we can get the three eights on there. Okay, I just gotta grab my ratchet. Well, before that, let me try the impact and see if I have enough room to get in there with an impact. Well, I thought anyway. All they would have had to have done was somebody just take and put a bend in the line about a half inch higher instead of ring it right in front of that bolt on there. We'll set these here off the side. Okay, and my guess is on the other side of that bearing race, there's going to be an, another step up because that's actually how you tighten it down. Everything out here goes in and it just, it just all lines up and all just busts together and tightens back against a um, another ring, a step up ring in the drive shaft. Just got my water hose brought in and I go ahead and pop this grease seal off and let's take a look inside and just see what the inside of that bearing looks like. You get to pop out there. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Well. There's a little bit of grease, but I'm just going to tell you right now, it looks kind of dry. Well, that's why I'm replacing it. And um, in fact, another one of my YouTube subscribers, uh, I think it's Kessler up in North Dakota, if I remember right. She actually commented on one of my videos where I was working on the left-hand side over on the armature side and um, made mention if you're, if you're going to replace the left side to go ahead and replace the right side as well. And I definitely agree. That way it just saves a lot of problems down the road. 
So, well, time to get the old torch out and get to work. Okay, I've got my torch rolled over here. And I'm actually going to take some old license plates and stick right down underneath here. Because I don't want all that hot slag junk dropping down because you got these hot rubber hydraulic hoses. And so we're just going to take and stick a couple of license plates right down there. That way it keeps them hoses protected. Well, for the most part anyway, I think. Eh, I guess that'll work. And so... But, um, yeah, like I say, it's got some grease out here on the outside part. But, um, from what I can see, in fact, maybe kind of looking back that way where the light's more or less shining in. On in there where the rollers are, I don't really see any grease at all. And so, like I say, since I've already done the left side, this side's getting it also. So, like, like I said, said also on the left side, now that I'm ready to start torching, uh, I'm not going to video that because, um, for one thing, I don't want uh, splat any splatter popping out and actually potentially going up and hit, hitting in, right into my camera lens and fly, frying it out. And also, i got to watch that bright torch light can actually goof up the focusing on my camera. And so, I don't want it to all, all goof up. But, um, I'll bring you along here as I'm getting it cut out and I'll show you what's happening. I've been working on this right here. I may, I've been actually taking a chisel and trying to break out all that, all that old slag out of that bearing. But, uh, basically just got to cut, cut the rollers out. Then this outer piece here will come off of the inner ace. And so, that's what I'm doing right now. And I may have to take and do a little bit more cutting up in this area. I thought I had, had all those cut out, but I still, I see there's still some right up through there. So I just got to keep playing with it, get that, get that whacked out there. All right, I finally got that thing all popped out, out of there. The outer casing. And right here it is. Got to get that ring out. And then it'll be ready to just take and put the new one in. But uh, next thing is to take and get that race cut off right there. And then um, that way the shaft can begin to cool back down. And just got to keep an eye out for anything wanting to smolder kind of inside right there. Any chaff or anything like that. But that's why you keep a garden hose handy. Okay, I just got done cutting through that race right there. So, let's see. Hey, there we go. Once you get that first cut through, it'll come off there pretty easy. Well, generally. Uh, let's see. Huh. That's odd. Actually, it's got a burr on it. You just can't go putting your fingers on that and the thing's so hot.
we go. Well, now it's on the ground. But um, I'll get a little bit of emery paper and shine that all up good. And that'll work. Got my fan set up here. And so it's cooling that shaft off. Well, I guess that's the best way to cool something down. It's really hot as opposed to taking cold water and spraying on it just to have a fan or something like that. That way you can cool it down with air and um, no risk of any, any possible cracks or breaks from hot, cold water hitting hot metal. Okay, I got you on my tripod. This here is that back pulley. This part here is what butts up against the, the inner race of the bearing. And like I said before, that part right there is what fills up with oil when you put the oil pressure to it. Right there is an O-ring. And so I'm gonna get my O-rings and put a new O-ring in that. Right here's all my goodies. Now the O-rings aren't marked, you just basically just gotta match them up. But um, there are some, in fact right there's one of them, backup rings. You gotta make sure you get these on the right, this, take, put, the, put the new ones on the same way you took the old ones off. Okay, there's more O-rings. Well, I'll take that back. I guess that's one folded up. Put that over there. Here's the new bearing. But um, I want to work on O-rings and that'll let that shaft keep cooling down. This part here is just a little bit different than the R52. It's got one O-ring here and um, then you have internal splines. If I remember right on the R52, it actually has two O-rings, one out here by the outside edge, just like this and then one a little bit deeper inside with the oil hole between the two O-rings. Because right there is the oil hole where it goes through and it comes out, looks like uh, right there. And that way you can come from this side, go through and then fill up this cavity with oil to push the shiv in and out and so well, like I say the basics are the same little picks like this work great for picking them o-rings out of there now this one here does not have a backup ring the, the backup rings are actually on this part this here is just one Nice big fat O-ring. In fact, actually, oh, that's just so sort of cruddiness. At first, I thought that was that was getting some tears in the O-ring, but I guess not. I am going to take a little bit of ether and clean that up a little bit. Prettiness in there and the main reason why is because that o-ring is basically sealing against the outside although it's not really open but you can still get dirt and that kind of stuff kind of seep, wanting to kind of seep in between here and the bearing race 
So I'm just going to take my 90 degree hook and just kind of run that right around that track, clean that up good. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, that's got that part cleaned up. Had to dig through all, through all of them. Uh, that right there is actually a match. That's a backup ring. That's a regular O-ring. Yeah, backup ring. We'll go ahead and put that back inside the bag. In fact, Looks like that one. That's it, that's what we want. Go ahead and get him opened up. Back when I talked to um, the Gleaner dealer, he had to, um, he had most of these on hand. He did have to take an order one, or one or two of them if I, if I remember right, but he had, he had most of them on hand. And so I'm just gonna take that right there and pop him right in just like that now i never thought there probably is one extra and the reason for that I'm trying to see here see here if i can find it maybe uh it might it might be in the in this bag well I'll probably come across it I just had it but um I never thought to tell him not to order this one but it's kind of hard kind of hard to know you can actually separate that right there in case you needed to change just that pulley you could separate by taking these bolts out and I think there's actually an o-ring between that in that separation part but um, I'm not going to take that part apart out it's together leave it together so that's got that o-ring let's take a quick look over here make sure we're all good to go just take an old rag and reach in there and wipe any crud out Just like that. And one thing to do when you go to put these things back on, especially back on the combine, take a little oil and oil that oil o ring up. That way it's not trying to jam in that onto that drive line. And um, it's a good way to take a nick and tear that o ring up. Okay, now on the shiv. You want to take and pull this centerpiece out. Hope you can see that. There we go. Just like that. And the yep, there's an O-ring inside that. Because this here is what goes over the main drive shaft. Try and get you set so you can see good. And same thing, just taking. Pop him out of there. Yeah, just like that. And right here, yep, there's a new one. 
and once again this reach down inside that tube clean him up Okay, not too sure how well you can see that down there, but right there's the new o-ring So that's got that part good to go Also one other thing you do have shims right there three of them That's it. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there we go sit right on top there The easiest way to keep track of them is to put them right back over where they came from, right back on there. And of course, make sure you got the dirt off of it. So, now we're going to work on this thing. This here's the part you got to pay attention to what you're doing because you have the regular O ring and the backup ring. a little bit of that old bean dust out of there. Let's see, I'm not too sure how we can see down in there. But the back up, the back up ring is on top. The regular o-ring is on is right beneath that and so you just gotta make sure you get them put back in the way you took them out yeah it's pretty easy just take and get your little hooks and put them things wrapping out of there there's the backup ring these are directional there's a little groove on the one side. And that is the side that faces the O-ring. So right there's the two old ones. Set them over there, they get tossed out. Now we'll get the new ones here by out. Back that one. right there they are. Perfect. And on that new one, I don't know how well you can see through that plastic or not. That little bit of a groove. Need to set my trash bag a little closer to me. But you'll just take. Put that o-ring in there like that get that piece of plastic out of there okay here's the o-ring Here's the backup ring. Okay, maybe you can see that just a little bit better. That little bit of a groove, if I can get the light kind of focused on it. But it's got that little bit of a groove in there. You wanna put that down, that way the O-ring actually seats into that groove. And that came off the top, we're gonna to put it right back in on the top. If you get them switched around backwards, so that the O-ring is on the outside and the backup ring is on the inside, there's a very good chance it'll leak and you'll be taking it all right back apart again. Okay, that's got it. The backup ring is on the outside. The main O-ring is on the inside. That's what you want. Okay. Just got done with these. 
Now here's on the back side of it. And on the outside, you have an O-ring and the backup ring. So we're gonna try and lay this down without tipping the camera over. Got a little weight to it. Okay, here's that. Take an old rag, just take and wipe that top piece off. Along with all the dirt and that can of crud. There we go. I mean, that thing's about done for. Okay, that's going all shined up. And once again, make sure you see where, where it goes. Right there, the O-ring is on the top. Backup ring is on the bottom. They can pop that up off there. Just like that. Then you got the backup ring and it is also directional. It's got a groove in it. There we are. Then take an old junky rag and just run around there and clean that little track up. Okay, that's got that. All right, there's the new backup ring. And right here, looks like the new outside ring. Okay, yeah, it's just all coiled up. Now right there are two little small rings and, hmm. I'm not exactly sure what they were for. because I've already taken care of all the inside ones. There's no more inside left. However, I do think on the R52, it may, it may show something a little bit different. And so that's a, unless it somehow a part number possibly subbed over to a, Maybe an older style, so he just, he just sent everything that I would possibly need, which that works also, no big deal. Okay, right there's the big fat one. And right there is the backup. Man, that old plastic's tough. Huh. It just keeps stretching. Won't rip. There we go. Okay, once again, backup ring goes in the bottom. Just like that. With the groove up, 
so that this one can seat into it. And there we got it. I've been looking around those extra O-rings. Like I say, you can actually split that right there, take these bolts out, and this right here will separate. That might be where them o extra O-rings go. However, since I am not separating it, I can just return them back and or keep them either one. But um, I think that's probably where they go inside there if you, if you have to take and separate that by pulling these bolts out. But um, I'm not gonna do that because we're good to go. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna call this an end of part two. We got all the O-rings on. And right here is the new bearing. Just gotta put that in the here. And so, come back for part three and I'll be putting the bearing back on and remounting the pulleys and that kind of stuff. So take care, thanks for watching. We'll see you in part three.